Hello everybody, it's the Reynolds Report here on NSS. And I'm Dave Reynolds, an absolutely beautiful day in Toronto and into the weekend with less humidity as well, sunshine and highs into the mid-twenties. Absolutely perfect weather for the festival of food, music and lots of fun, the Dundas West Fest. Celebrating that vibrant community by highlighting pretty much everything it has to offer happening this weekend. Also note that the number one TTC subway line will be closed this weekend for maintenance. Blue Jays hosting the cards. Oh my, TTC chaos this weekend. And good afternoon, Rome. Just spectacular weather with lots of sunshine and into the low 30s by the weekend. Great weather for the concerts in the park of Appia Antica, just outside of Rome. In Tokyo, rather unsettled weather into the weekend and clouds with scattered showers and highs into the low 20s. One of Japan's biggest craft events, the Yokohama Handmade Market, attracting more than 2,500 artists, restaurateurs, designers and other creatives is happening this weekend in Tokyo. And Sydney has mostly sunny skies through the weekend and highs into the upper teens. Now in its fifth year, the Head On Photo Festival wraps up this weekend with exhibitions, workshops and international guest speakers. Thrilling Game 1 of the Stanley Cup Final last night. Kings in overtime Game 2 Saturday in Hollywood. Los Angeles weather, sunshine and warm in LA right through the weekend with highs into the low 30s. Perfect weather for the LA Pride, one of uh, the biggest Pride events in the United States attracting nearly half a million people during its three-day festival at West Hollywood Park and the famous three-hour Sunday parade going in Los Angeles weekend. Toronto debuted a couple of cool things yesterday. A brand new streetcar with a brand new design made its first run. The full fleet of new streetcars will be on the rails by the end of August. And public health officials in Toronto rolled out the design for the first Toronto branded condom yesterday. Dubbed Condom T.O., Public Health wants to give out about 300,000 of the free limited edition condoms over the next few weeks. The campaign is designed to reinvigorate <laughs> and normalize condom use. No matter which way you go, put it on, reads the slogan on the package. The condoms will be available starting next week at various Toronto bars, clubs, hotels, gyms and clinics and on Coxwell Avenue, Wood Street and Cummer Avenue. Let's talk NHL hockey. Is there no end to the Kings' resilience? No situation too dire for them to wiggle out of. Pretty amazing game last night. It's the Big Apple versus Hollywood with hockey's top prize on the line. The Stanley Cup final kicked off last night as the Rangers took on the Kings in the first New York-Los Angeles major sports final since 1981. Kings win an OT 3-2. The Kings, who have home ice advantage for the first time in these playoffs, were fresh off a grueling seven-game series against the Chicago Blackhawks, while the Rangers defeated the Montreal Canadiens in six games to reach the Stanley Cup final. Los Angeles got out to a bit of a slow start, with the Rangers taking a 2-0 lead in the first period. The Kings' Kyle Clifford narrowed New York's lead with less than three minutes left to go in the first period. Drew Doughty tied the game in the second period, sending that game into overtime after a scoreless third period. Justin Williams sealed the Kings' win with an overtime goal assisted by Mike Richards. Game two goes Saturday in Hollywood. All right, staying with the Stanley Cup for just a second, and compared to the coolness of what the Montreal Canadiens mascot Yuppie and Jimmy Fallon got up to last week, this seems, well, pretty lame. New York Governor Andrew M. Cuomo and California Governor Jerry Brown have made an interstate wager on the outcome of the Rangers-Kings Stanley Cup final. Now, if the Rangers win, Governor Brown will send Governor Cuomo a book, California, a History, by Kevin Starr, and Lundberg Organic Brown Rice Cakes that are lightly salted. If the Kings win, Governor Cuomo will send Governor Brown a Taste New York gift basket featuring products from local businesses from across the Empire State. Also a commemorative hockey puck from the 2013 hat trick of three on-time New York budgets in a row. You know what's even more boring than that? Me watching another Spider-Man movie with my pants on. Well, it goes from bad to worst for the Biebs. Another racially insensitive video featuring Justin Bieber has surfaced. 
Late yesterday, TMZ posted a video of the then 14-year-old Justin Bieber changing the words to his hit song, One Less Lonely Girl, to include the N-bomb and singing about joining the Ku Klux Klan. A source close to Bieber confirms to CNN that the singer was 14 at the time of the incident and made the recording after he saw a comedian parodying his One Less Lonely Girl song online. Bieber went straight to Instagram, posting three biblical passages yesterday, all to do with forgiveness. I was 14, I didn't know better, here's some Bible passages. That's Bieber's go-to on this. And so begins the deportation talk again. Bieber being threatened with deportation is one more thing he has in common with John Lennon, bringing the total up to one. By the way, Bieber will stand trial next month for a DUI charge from last year. You know what I'd do? I'd let Bieber go on the DUI and lock him up again for aggravated auto-tune and lip syncing. Hey, thanks for watching today. We'll catch you back here tomorrow. A quick reminder that the Frank D'Angelo Band will be performing live July 17th at the Mod Club here in Toronto. A big bonus as well. The first 50 people in will receive an autographed CD Blu-ray combo pack of the album, just give me one more moment, and the DVD of the theatrical release of the Real Gangsters movie. Excellent.